It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we're adding some secret sauce to our beats using the stock plugins, frequency shifter, and flanger. The track that we're using as a demonstration was made entirely out of Pop and Plux presets, available now at wholeloops.com. The first sound that I would like to flange is down here. This is our low pluck made out of the rainbow kale preset in Pop and Plucks. And it's got a pretty heavy echo on it. And I would like to take those echoes and have them sound slightly different from the dry signal. And one of my favorite effects to put on echoes that isn't one of the options here in echo is a flanger. So we just add a little outer space to these sounds. We can have the flanger affect the higher frequency content just by pushing up this high pass control. I'm gonna keep the dry wet at 100% because we're already putting this on a parallel chain. The only things that I could kind of finagle with are the delay time, which controls how far apart the wet and dry signal are, and feedback, which is how many repeats of the wet signal you're gonna get. The higher you turn this number, the more you hear that ringy up and down noise. You can also invert the direction of the flanging with this button here. Or if you were using this out here, not as a delay flanger, but just to flange the whole thing, we could hit this envelope and not have it flange the attacks of our signal and just have it wait till the decay of the signal based off of what you put here with the release. And the next thing that we can adjust is the speed at which our pitch shifted signal bounces up and down with this amount control and the rate and phase. Now this isn't phase as in phasing the audio, this is the phase of the pitch bend. So where in this sine wave is the pitch bend going to begin? And that's what you're controlling here with your phase. Or you have your two buttons here that control the offset of the LFO with either out of phase or having it spin. But like I said, I'd prefer to use this just on the delay. So I'm gonna drag this back over here. And now we're doing that weird pitchy thing to just the delays. We don't even need to do 100% on the amount. Hey. The next thing that I'm gonna do some adjustments to in this beat is down in the drums. I'm gonna go find my hi-hat closed. And this is a perfect thing to put your frequency shifter on. Now, what this is doing is simply modulating the pitch of your output based off of the timing that you assign here. So if we push this amount all the way up, You hear our hi-hats are now pitching up and down. And I'm not gonna use it at 100%, but I am gonna use it somewhere halfway between just to help the hi-hats sound slightly different every time. And instead of having it change so quickly, I think I'm gonna have it do a measure and a half. That way it still gives you something different every time. Let's also check out our frequency options. We can have it either shift the pitch of it or just add a ringing overtone to it. But I'm trying to do some shifting. Maybe push this up a little bit more. And then we can have this either be a wide or narrow frequency. And the same way that the pan randomization here inside Simpler and Sampler is super crucial for mixing your hi-hats, a little bit of velocity variation and pitch variation is just gonna be the icing on the cake for your super saucy hi-hats. 
then we can also paste this frequency shifter down here onto our open hi-hats. <laughs> Why not add a little bit of flanger just to get these things sounding popping? Hey! And without it. And back on. I think a little flanger action on this crash won't hurt either. Let's do a slower LFO on that pitch because I want this to go instead of move it before our volume shaper and that is significantly more popping now are your plucks popping have you spent countless hours programming your plucks with no results introducing poppin plucks volume one the complete collection of serum presets that will get your plucks so popping your song just might pop off poppin plucks is available now only at holoops.com and last but not least, I'd like to add a little bit of flanging to my producer tag. Because it's not a producer tag until you've got some flanger on there. Maybe we'll get a little bit creative and see if we can add some flanger to this clap, but I don't want every clap to be flanged. So what I'm gonna do is some automation so that every other clap has a little bit of dry wet and then every other one is just completely dry. So maybe these doubled up claps will have the flanger on there. Boom. And even 15% was too much on a clap, especially if the clap is the only backbeat in your production. A flanger can be a bit much. We're just trying to do a little bit of flanging and that's where automation comes. And even this I wanna turn down more, so I'm gonna highlight it and just grab it and pull it down, and if you hold command, you'll get some fine adjustments. Boom, 3%. And I might actually turn off high quality on these because I find the flanger to be too bright. Turn our feedback back up, much better. You can see high quality really makes a difference in how, th how this flanger reacts to high frequency stuff. But there you have it. That is my sauce guide to the Ableton flanger and frequency shifter. I hope you found all the tips and tricks in this tutorial useful, and maybe you just found yourself a new use for your flanger and frequency shifter. If you'd like to see the rest of my Ableton ABCs where I break down all the stock plugins in alphabetical order, check out the playlist link in the description, and I'll catch you guys next time with another tutorial. Peace out.